Let's say we have this block, and let's say originally the block is at this particular location. But let's say one second later, now the block is here. It's moved one meter. And now let's say another second later, now the block is here. It's moved another meter. And let's say another second goes by, now the block has moved here. So clearly this block is moving. As time goes on, its location is changing. So whenever we have an object displacing its location with time, it has a velocity. So, and that's just something you need to be aware of. Whenever there's an object moving its location with time, it, it, it has a velocity, it's moving. So how do we determine the velocity of this block? How can we determine what its velocity was? Well, the formula for velocity is here. The velocity of an object equals the change in location divided by the change in time. So in this situation, what was the velocity of this block? Well, we see what was the what was its displacement? What was its change in location? Well, we saw originally we were at zero meters. Then in the end, we were at three meters. So we saw the change in the displacement was three meters. So that's what this delta x was, three meters. That's how much distance we had covered. And what was the change in time? Well, we saw it took three seconds to move this entire distance. Because remember, originally we were here. Then one second later, we were here. Then another second, now we are here. Now third second, now we're here. So it took three seconds, three seconds to move three meters. So now that we know this, we just use a simple formula. And now we know the threes cancel and based on the units, now we know the velocity of this block. The velocity of this block was one meters per second. Every second that goes by, the block moves one meter. It moves one meter per second. So pretty straightforward, and that's what a velocity is. So whenever you have an object moving, changing its location with time, you know it has a velocity, and you can determine that velocity with this equation. So let's do another example. Let's say originally we have a block here, so at this particular location, and let's say one second later, now the block is here. So now we see what was the velocity of this block, because clearly, as time goes on, its location changed. So clearly it has a velocity, clearly it's moving. What was the velocity of this block? Well, we know the formula for velocity. We know the change in location divided by the amount of time it took, you can determine the velocity. So we see it moved three meters. So that was a change in location. It, 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 the displacement was three meters and it did it in one second. We saw originally we were here, one second later we were here. So it took one second. So now we know based on the units and then how this divides, now we get the velocity is three meters per second. So what does this mean? This means this block just moves three meters per second. And that's what a three meters per second velocity means. So that's what velocity is. And, and remember, velocity is, is a vector. It has a direction and it's different from speed, but I'll talk about that in another video. But this is the formula for velocity. If you know how much distance you've covered and you know the amount of time it, it required to cause that change in distance, you just use this formula and now you can determine the velocity. So now let's do another example. Let's say we have this block. So let's say originally we have this block with the current velocity of three meters per second. And we know what that means. What does that mean if this block has a velocity of three meters per second? That means every one second that goes by, its loca location is dis displaced by three meters. It travels three meters per one second. So currently this block has this current velocity. But let's say one second later, now the block has this velocity. So now it has a velocity of five meters per second. And what does that mean? That means in one second, it displaces five meters. It travels five meters per one second. So what's going on? Well, we see we're having a change in velocity. And something important to realize is whenever an object's velocity is changing with time, then it has an acceleration. And that's actually the definition of acceleration. And that's just something you just need to memorize. Whenever an object's velocity is changing with time, it has an acceleration and we see one second goes by and we see its velocity has changed. So therefore it has an acceleration. And the formula for acceleration is this. If you know what the change in velocity was and you know how long it took to cause that change in velocity, you can determine what the acceleration was. So just use this formula to determine the acceleration. So what was the change in velocity? Well, originally we were at three meters per second. Then one second later, now we're at five meters per second. So our velocity increased by two meters per second. That was the change in velocity.
And how long did it take to cause that change in the velocity? Well, we see it took one second. It took one second for the velocity to increase by two meters per second. So now we know we just plug in our values and based on, on the units and dividing these, now we know our acceleration is two meters per second squared. So now we know this block has an acceleration of two meters per second squared. And again, what does that mean? Well, again, essentially it means every one second that goes by, its velocity increases by two meters per second. And again, you can look at the units for what's going on, but that's what an acceleration is. And again, whenever an object's velocity is changing, it has an acceleration. So let's do another example. Let's say originally the block is traveling at with a current velocity of four meters per second. Every one second that goes by, it displaces, displaces four meters. But let's say one second later, now it has a velocity of 10 meters per second. So we see its velocity is changing. And we know whenever we have a change in velocity, we have an acceleration. So we see clearly this block is accelerating because we see its velocity changing with time. How do we determine exactly what the acceleration is of this, of this object? Well, we know the formula for acceleration. We know, we know what the change in velocity is, and we know how long it took to cause that change in velocity. We know the acceleration. So what was the change in velocity? Well, originally we were at four meters per second. Then we see one second later, now we're at 10 meters per second. So what was the change in velocity? Well, we saw the velocity changed by six meters per second. It increased by six meters per second. How long did it take to cause that change in velocity? It took one second. So we need to know what the change in velocity was. We know how long it took to cause that change in velocity. So now we just solve, and now we know the acceleration is positive six meters per second squared. And again, what does that mean? What does this acceleration of six meters per second squared means? That means every one second that goes by, its velocity increases by six meters per second. And again, notice it's a positive acceleration. Because again, we need to define a coordinate system, so we would have to define this direction as positive, and then this direction as negative, so we would need to define that. And if we have a positive acceleration, that means as time goes on, the velocity is increasing in that positive direction. But a more complicating example is, let's say this. Let's say originally the block is moving at 10 meters per second. So originally it's moving really fast in this direction. But let's say one second later, now it's only moving at 4 meters per second. So again, clearly we see the velocity is changing. And we know whenever an object's velocity is changing, it has an acceleration. So what is the acceleration of this block? Well, again, we just use our equation. So what is the change in velocity? Well, we see originally we're at 10 meters per second. So originally we're moving in this direction at 10 meters per second. So every one second that goes by, we've displaced 10 meters in this direction. So we know that's, that's our original velocity of 10 meters per second. One second later, now our velocity is four meters per second. So what is our change in velocity? Well, we see the velocity has decreased by six meters per second. So that was the change in velocity minus six meters per second because it's decreased. And again, how long did it cause to, to, to have that change in velocity? It, took, it required one second to cause that change in velocity. So now we know it required one second for the velocity to decrease by six meters per second. Now we just solve this and now we get the acceleration of this block was negative six meters per second squared. And again, what does that mean? That means every one second that goes by, the velocity is decreasing by six meters per second. And I know this is really complicating because it's, it's weird. We have a negative acceleration, even though this entire time we're moving in this direction, we're moving in the positive direction. Originally, we're moving really fast in the positive direction. Then we're moving a little slower, but we're still moving in the positive direction. So this entire time we're moving in the positive, accelera uh, uh, positive direction. But why do we have a negative acceleration? What does that even mean? Well, again, you can have a negative acceleration even though this entire time we've been moving in the positive direction. Just as time went on, we were moving slower in the positive direction. Originally, we were moving really fast in the positive direction. Then one second later, we were moving a little slower in the positive direction, but we were still moving in the positive direction. So that's why we have a negative acceleration because the velocity essentially has decreased.